Trading Nut, episode 43. Longer time frames, smaller position size, and I always say the stress test is when you go to bed at night, if you can sleep and you've got open trades, your position size is right. If you can't sleep, your position size is too good. The market's going to do something. Your job is not to fight it. The market never, ever runs away. It's always there. That personal diary of trading will make you a much better trader than I could be right about the direction, but wrong about the trade. Don't focus on the monetary side. Trying to make too much money on a trade is what I have seen killed every trader. Your losses offer you some of the greatest insight you can find into your mistakes. Relax. Learn the process. Candlestick pattern trading is a freaking trap. Don't be in a rush to become a millionaire. Let the market tell you what the market wants to tell you. This podcast is not financial, trading, or investing advice of any kind. What's up, traders? Welcome to another installment of the Trading Nut Podcast. I'm your host, Cam Hawkins, and today we've got Jim Brown on the show. Now, Jim's an Aussie trader who now lives in Vietnam. He's living the sort of trader's dream where, you know, living on the beach, trading for a living, that sort of thing. We're going to hear from Jim today. Not just that, but we jumped on a little uh, video session afterwards, and there's a great video where you actually see exactly how Jim trades his strategy. So he walks us through, you see the indicators, you see the money management, he walks us through everything, every step of the way. Uh, so after you've listened to this, make sure you click the links in the description, jump on to tradingnut.com, find Jim's episode, episode 43, and you'll find out exactly what he, how he does what he does, and how he does it in such a short period of time in terms of how much time he actually spends trading, which is fantastic. So um, great episode coming up for you guys. Now, before we jump in there... There was something that occurred to me this week that I just wanted to let you in on. All right, so I don't know, you probably don't know, but I've, my, I'm half, well, almost finished my football season here in New Zealand. So I know we're starting, the Premier League's starting up in a, in a week or so, and uh, and the rest of the world is sort of kicking into their winter, whereas we're, we're coming out of our winter, well, you'd like to think so, but it's still pretty cold. And uh, my football season's coming to an end. Last year, I, I somehow managed to get top goal scorer for the, for the team. This year, on the other hand, I've, I've had injury after injury, and I've really been struggling. The last couple of games has really been when I've come into my form, and I've, pro- I've been tr- desperately trying for probably the last four or five games to score a goal, just to get one goal. I can't even get one. I'm on the goal drought of the century, and it wasn't until this week that I just decided after last week, I think I did. I have a, I had a couple of shots. They're all off target. I've had keeper saves, like ma- magical saves, uh, <laughs> denying me from goals that I should have had or could have had. And uh, anyway, long story short, this last week I did something a little different, and I think there's a lesson in here for everyone, and it does relate back to what you're doing with your trading as well. So what it did was I actually just gave up on the whole thing. I completely gave up on the idea of scoring a goal this season and thought, okay, look, forget it. I'll try again next season. This season is done and dusted. Give up. And you know what? In the back of my mind, I was sort of thinking, uh, maybe by saying that, I'm subconsciously telling myself that in actual fact, I'm now free to just get on and do it. And so anyway, long story short, I, I scored a goal uh, this weekend, so I managed to score my first goal, uh, and really happy about that personally. But I did think, man, how many times am I actually, have I done that to myself when it comes to trading, where I'm sort of get to the point where things... I'm forcing it so much that I I really just, what if I just released and said, look, you know, this thing will happen. If it happens, it happens. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey. Forget about trying to make it happen, okay? So I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to give it a go this week. If you guys want to give it a go with your trading, if that's something that you need to think about is are you pushing really hard for this and just... Do you just want to step back and go, look, let's just forget about it. Take the pressure off. I'm just going to go through the motions here. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. We'll try again the week after. Anyway, that's my thoughts for the day. Um, Now, we've got a few guys going through my new course. And I don't know if I haven't really promoted this at all, but a new course where I teach you how to build a trading robot or build trading robots, any trading robot you want, in 21 days. And... The good thing about this is if you've got lots of strategies, what I find is if you've got lots of strategies that you're, you know, keep getting bombarded with, you want to try this one, you want to try that one, or you're trying a strategy and you you're finding it doesn't work, and then you're moving to another one, or you just can't help but move to from strategy to strategy, then this could be something that could be quite handy because what it allows me to do 
is it allows me to focus on my manual trading with one particular approach. And then all the other stuff, all the other noise, I just automate that. And I'll just spend a bit of time building those strategies, turning them into robots. Some of them for my Robot Traders Club, where other people can jump on there, members like yourself, and and use those and get access to those. Um, but it just there are other times that I'll just go off and have an idea and go, why don't I just try that out? But instead of ruining my manual trading, I now just let my strategy hopping sit fully in the automated space, and I build that out, see if it works. If it doesn't, then I move on. Anyway, thought for you guys, if you're interested, check it out. It's up there on the site under the robots thing in the top nav. You can find that no problems. Now, last but not least, if you have got a question for the show you want answered, then please do flick us a note, use the contact us on the site, or there is a submit a question option there up in the top of the very, very top of the site. All right, guys, without further ado, that's enough from me. Let's get on with the interview with Jim Brown. Here we go. All right, folks, we've got uh, Jim Brown on the show here from JagFX. Now, Jim's a, uh, he's actually one of my listeners as well, which is great, and an author of a few books. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, Forex Trading, Forex Trading with Divergence, uh, MT4, MT5, High Probability Forex Trading Method. Uh, Jim, welcome to the show. It's great to have you on here. No worries, Cam. Thanks for having me. Hey, look, um, uh, <laughs> You're one of the rare sort of uh, people that comes through as a listener who's who's a who's a profitable trader and uh, and has a bit of a bit of a following themselves. So um, it's great to sort of get you on the show to to I suppose you might give everyone a, a slightly different perspective since uh, since you know what the show's all about and the top type of questions that I ask you're probably well prepared uh, in terms of what's coming up. So so let's let's kick into it with with how you first got into trading and your journey to date. So how you sort of went from from where to go. Yeah, no problems mate. Yeah, I have been a listener. I was listening to your old um, 52 Traders podcast from the start. Pretty good actually. Uh, my trading um, probably started in the sort of mid to, uh, mid 90s um, futures did a course back in Australia when I lived there uh, through, it was a GAN-based course. So it was, I think it was called Safety in the Market, where I was actually hand-drawing charts um, and trading the share, uh, sorry, the Australian futures, which are three-year, 10-year bonds and the share price index. Uh, that got me interested Um I soon blew up an account there. Just uh, the risk was too great, and it was um, hard going. And that was just part time sort of trading. Moved on uh, shares and had a look at options, etc. Um, sort of kept my interest. And I remember in two thousand and two, I went to a private uh, trading meeting at a, a person's um, private residence, and they introduced someone mentioned forex, and I thought, "What's this forex? Never heard about it." So. Since 2002, mate, I think it was about January 2002, I've been Forex, everything else has been dropped, and Forex is the go. Cool. And so uh, so how did you go from that initial meeting where, where you, you know, found out about Forex and decided to dive into it? I mean, what was your first foray into it, maybe the first year? Um, it was just part-time, just learning, because in, in those early days, there wasn't really much about Forex, and... I was sort of looking at some software that this um, mate of mine that was at that meeting, he um, designed and built that um, sort of just gave signals basically to trade. And I remember one of the other guys that was there, he was just like a, a plumber or an electrician or something like that. He showed me his accounts. He was just tra- trading the Japanese yen against the US dollar on the 10 minute time frame uh, over, oh, it was only 18 months or something. He turned 10,000 to some ridiculous amount of money. And I just go, whoa, yeah, how would you do that? You know, I couldn't replicate his results. So a lot of it was based on that sort of software initially. Then I was introduced to other styles of trading and went through what everyone else does, you know, bounced around from one shiny object to the next, made all the different trading systems, et cetera, until I settled on my own sort of stuff later on, quite a few years later on. So, yeah, it's a bit of a <laughs> all over the shop for a while there. <laughs> and so, so that, that journey, I mean – Talk us through the detail in terms of, see, were you in Australia at the start of that and you've, you've ended up in Vietnam somehow? How did that all happen? I, at the time, I was in the, um, uh, where was I, Northern Territory Police, and then I went to the Queensland Police. So, yeah, I was in on the Gold Coast in Australia. Then I, um, 
I left the police, I think, in about 2005, and I went actually full-time trading then. Uh, I didn't leave the police under really great sort of circumstances. Uh, there was a, had a few dramas, you know, just sort of burnt out, etc. So I wasn't probably in the right state of mind for trading. Gave it a go for about a year. Uh, I wasn't losing money, but it was a lot of stress just trying to live from, you know, when I was used to getting the government paycheck every fortnight for the last, you know, 25 years of my life. It was hard going the trading, so I eventually ended up going back to um, full-time work and trading part-time again and sort of just refined my systems and in 2000 and late 2014 called it quits and me and the wife packed up and moved to Vietnam and trading for a living full-time since then. So that, it all sounds fairly simple, you know, you just quit your job and <laughs> bang, Bob's your uncle, you, you, you're now trading for a living and you're, oh, let's do the, the trader's life uh, hashtag um, and move to Vietnam. So so how did you, so what were you studying when you were like, you'd quit that, you quit the police and decide to go full time? I mean, what was your method at that point? Uh, I was actually following a couple other um, guys at that time. I um, It was one, you're not going to believe this, I was paying $150 US a day to get his signals, and which had been profitable for years, but the old Murphy's Law, as soon as I started looking at him, <laughs> didn't, not, didn't quite work out the way I hoped. And, um, and I hooked up with these other, these other guys sort of with, and got involved in a, in a trading team um, that we had a pretty sort of uh, straightforward mechanical system where there was three of us from all around the world taking shifts, trading on the one-hour shifts, basically 24-7 or 24-5 with a Forex market, just having specific targets and that. So that went pretty well for all. We are funded by a, a, a wealthy um, Brit and, um, you know, it's a very professional sort of, um, sort of team environment, and um, but things went wrong. Uh, one of the team members got uh, really sick and made some stupid decisions when he was sick. No fault of his, but then the, another one got greedy. Then the the, um, the guy that, that uh, uh, supplied us with the money, he got he wanted more from us, and it was just putting too much you know, strain on working. And eventually we called that quits. Then I just sort of did my own thing for a while up in that um, sort of that year. Then once I went back to work, I just concentrated on building my own systems, et cetera, and went from there. And and so what were you, what were you basing your decision-making on at that point when you were trading for the sky? Was it technical uh, indicators or, or some sort of other price action? Uh, I was basically just trading three pairs, mate, the one-hour chart, the Swiss, the euro, and the pound. We just had to make 200 pips cumulative for the week, and that was the week done. Sometimes we did that by um, Monday evening or Tuesday morning. Other times it used to take us till Saturday morning our time, so it depends on how we're going. Um, it was just a sort of a breakout-type system where you just drew line, uh, horizontal lines on the chart at uh, previous high. And it was very strict mechanical rules. You, you couldn't stuff it up even if you wanted to. It was a pretty straightforward system, which I still play with to this day, but not, not as not as serious as I probably should be. But, yeah. And so, so we all all three of you guys were doing the same system, and you were literally just drawing these lines and placing the trades when when it the the, the rules yeah, lined take, up. Yeah, we're taking um, basically eight hour shifts, three eight hour shifts. So the three of us. And um, once the we just monitored, you just had to monitor the chart, the top of every hour. You didn't have to do anything during the hour unless it was getting close to your profit target. So, oh my word, know. it sounds like the easiest two hundred pips anyone could ever make. Oh, we did it for uh, quite a few months every week. A um, couple of weeks there, we probably didn't quite make the two hundred. But the, the problem was that we would get the two hundred. Say we got the two hundred by Monday night. You know, we started only trading, started trading Monday morning. If we had it, got it by Monday night, then we think, oh, we can make another 200. Right. But then you'd lose that, yeah. you'd lose it, and that's what I mean. We, we'd be working through till Friday, and that's where the, <laughs> the, guy, the, guy beyond, the guy beyond the money, he got a bit greedy and said, come on, make more pips, make more pips. But, you know. Oh, right. So you'd see that you'd make it on Monday and go, 
Hang on a sec. Yeah. Why, why am I paying these Keep guys for? Yeah, why am I paying these guys? <laughs> can do it one day of the week, and then you'd lose it, and then be trying yeah. to make it back. Is that right? So, oh, gee. yeah. It'll take us take us four days to get it all back. Yeah. Oh god. So that's pretty good to go in there. I mean, like being consistently generating two hundred pips a week. I mean, is that if, you know most traders will be quite happy with that. I mean, is 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 that something that? How did you come up with the system? Oh, I didn't come up with that one, but. Um... It's a pretty. It's still a pretty robust system. I think I've got a, a few YouTube videos on it. I've tried to modify it over the years and make it a bit more user friendly. Um, the problem with it, it's on the one hour chart now. To trade it, you have to be at at the charts every hour. Now, if I if I was if I was a robot and I didn't have a life, I would trade the one hour charts every day of the week. I love the one hour charts. But they are hard work, you know, like if you've got to watch them every hour. So that was the problem. Right. And it, it's, and it's a hard system to – you couldn't turn it into a uh, automated system. Uh, someone may be able to do, do it these days, but back then we couldn't do it. Um, yeah, look, it's, it's certainly a, a system that you need either a team or – if you could automate it, that'd be great. Or maybe just someone that doesn't like sleep. <laughs> okay, so it's, it's sort of like a, it's, it's a job. You've created yourself a job for 200 yeah, pips a, yeah. a, a week. Uh, yeah. That said, the job might only be one day a week if you can do your 200 oh, pips on be. a Monday or Tuesday. Yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah, okay, so that's, that's fascinating. That's, that's incredible. So um, so just going back on that, how did, you, how did that – strategy come about i mean did so somebody told taught you it that one of the three guys or yeah yeah one of the three guys um he's a pretty smart canadian dude he um he come up he come up with it and um, basically just gave us the rules and you know we should sort of just he taught us and we just went from there it's pretty straightforward it's not hard nothing nothing secretive or hard about it and so so you were so this so before that, what were you doing? Like in terms of, had you come up with strategies that were working alongside that? Oh, before that, that's when I was sort of paying other people to give me signals or get some sort of education from them. Um, that didn't really work out that well for me. Um, I sort of went on from after I went back to work. I sort of started developing other, looking at other methods. End up going with a company that was offering sort of a um, different, like a not a prop firm as such, but they offered you different levels and they would give you their funding. And they that was on the Gold Coast in Australia. They went bust. It cost me a few thousand with them, but I've got my now what I call my main indicator, custom indicator, from that experience. Right. So even though it probably cost me a few thousand, that's now what is my bread and butter. So ah. and I've developed systems develop systems around that specific indicator so that's that's what i do these days okay so so if we so that, that's good to find out so we've got so basically you you found this indicator and was there something around that indicator that you thought wow man this is uh what, what got you excited about to think this is this could be the base of everything that i do um well I'll, it's just a macd it's called a macd platinum and all it is the only difference between a normal MACD and the MACD Platinum is the MACD Platinum's got a zero lag feature. Um, don't ask me what zero lag actually means. Just Google, if you, anyone wants to know, if any of your listeners want to know, just um, Google zero lag moving average, and that'll give you an idea because a MACD is just a moving average. So if you just Google uh, okay. zero lag moving average, it'll give you a fair idea what a, a zero lag feature is. Uh, it just makes the MACD look different to what a default MACD would look like, and I just noticed something about it. Um, basically, it's like any MACD, it's got a zero level. Generally, any time the MACD is below the zero level, I'm looking to buy. Any time the MACD is above the zero level, I'm looking to sell. And it's just a matter of working around that and building a system around that using one other indicator that I use, which is the QQE Advanced ADV, QQE ADV, which is, uh, I should have looked this up before I started talking. <laughs> um, quantitative something, something, something. It's a whole, you can just Google QQE Advanced ADV. That's all it is. And it's a, it's a pretty 
good custom indicator and between that and the MACD Platinum, that's that's basically my strategy based around those two indicators. Throw a couple of three moving averages on the chart just to give me an idea of trend and off I go. And so how did you how did you come up with that QQE one? Um, I took that one from another system that I found that you know, you know these these people that market systems every other month, you know, that, that sort of people. Um, I, was, I, I read a PDF somewhere and I thought, I like to look at this QQE and I um, did a bit of research on it and, and I thought, oh, yeah, this, this looks, it's got some merit, you know, and I could see how it worked. Not, not that I could understand how it worked, but I could see how it worked. And um, when I um, combined it with my MACD Platinum thinking, and I thought, hey, I'm onto something here. So yeah, that was it. That's what the, <laughs> everything's based around these days. Nice, nice, nice. So, so when you got to that point where you had these two indicators, and you're sort of going, okay, look, I've got two things at work, and I'm going to sort of come up with something that can work as a whole. Yep. Where did you? How did you craft it so that? You know, okay. Let's go back. Let's take take a step back. So we know that you you didn't like wait working around the clock, waiting every hour to check something, and then okay. you know that was just too much work. So you're obviously sort of wanting something a bit more in and out and a shorter period of time. And did you craft something around what you're after, or how did that work? Uh, I probably went the opposite way, Cam. Um, yeah. I, I, like everyone, I, I think. You know, geez, I could trade all day, just trade for two hours on the five-minute charts and I'll be done, or well, the 15-minute charts. But I've soon learned that it's not for me. I'm not a day trader. Um, it's just too hard. I, I, I wear glasses as it is. It hurts my head after two hours staring at the computer screen. It's not it doesn't suit my lifestyle. So I actually went out, sort of went out to the four-hour and the daily charts. It took a while to get to the daily charts, but eventually got there, and that's my bread and butter now. So... So with me these days, it's like, for me, the New York candle open is at 4 a.m. local at the moment. So um, I get up at 6, so it's only two hours after that, and I just look at the charts once in the morning, do what I have to do, and that's me done for the day. Okay, really? So, so it's just literally once, oh, because you're trading daily candles, you, you're just, daily. it's a one-off thing. Every, every now and then I'll drop down, like, for, for my readers, and when I've got time, and, um, you know, I can commit, say, a couple of months to it. I'll, I might drop down and say 12-hour, 8-hour, 6-hour, 4-hour charts and just hammer through them just to set up some stuff and just to show that it does work on the, those other time frames. But, but generally the daily charts might go to, and that's a lifestyle choice. It's interesting. Uh, it sounds very much like what uh, VP um, was teaching or is teaching through his <laughs> podcast. Do you, do you agree? I, I, I suspect you've heard that one. Yeah, mate, I've listened to VP stuff. I'm, uh, <laughs> he's a very um, secretive man, isn't he? Um, and a very opinionated. But he seems he's got some good stuff. I'm not criticising him. But he has got some good stuff. I'm just not sure. I, I agree with how he. It's his way of the you know the, everything else is wrong sort of thing, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But, uh, no, no, I, I, I do like his podcast. It's, it's quite, it's entertaining and yes, uh, it and educational as well. And like you know, I, I'm, I'm not too sure where everyone's at with it. I haven't listened to every episode, but um, I know a lot of people are sort of trying to get by the sound of it where you are at the moment with these indicators you found. You've worked out a way to use them. You're on the daily chart. I mean, I know that he was doing all those all those three things at least, um, but he had a a set sort of procedure in terms of how he uh, enters the trade and, you know, confirmation one, two, three, whatever it is, and, and an exit indicator and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It doesn't and, sound and, like you've got that. But that's what every trader should have too, Cam. You know, like um, you've got to have a, a, a rules-based system with some discretion, uh, not necessarily some I – need, I need like a, a red or green arrow or something like that just to give me – tell me when to get in. I, I can't. I couldn't be a pure price action trader because I'd be always second guessing myself. You know, I need a red dot or a green dot on the chart saying, "Right, there's your entry. Get in." Right. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. It does make and, it a lot easier. And every, yeah, and everyone everyone needs rules. You know, you just can't wing it. You know, like it's, then you can't back test properly. You can't. You know, it's it just doesn't make sense to me if you don't have some sort of rules. 
But, you know, having said that, discretion is a big part of trading, you know, because you can look, if you look at charts all the time like I have for years and years, you soon realise, no, nah, this is not going right or, you know, that doesn't look right or something like that. Just get out and who cares if it keeps on going. You know, there's, there'll be another trade around the corner soon, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it, it takes time to get to that point as well. So, okay, let's let's get into some of the uh, the detail around what you're doing. So, um, what's the so you, you're trading on the on the daily? I mean, what sort of winning percentage do you get with this system? Well, that it, I do. I must admit, I don't trade enter trades with it stops initially, which is I know a lot of people don't like that. But that's just the way I trade. Um, if I so with my way of trading, the trade management style, it's roughly around the, it's, I'd say it's just 70, mid 70s percent, 75, maybe up to 78, give or take. And I know what your next question is going to be, risk reward. <laughs> yeah, so what's the, what's the risk reward on that? I suppose it's quite hard what? if you don't have a stop to start off with. Or how, uh, how does it's, that it's actually it's work? Slightly, it's slightly negative, mate. So for every um, for every dollar I l- lose, I'm probably winning ninety two cents or something like that. I, it's slightly negative. Okay. Okay. So but the percent, the, the winning percent, gives me the profit. So that's the main thing. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and so when you say losing, I mean losing a, a, a trade. So you don't start off with a stop, but you put a stop in at some point. What, at what point do you put the stop in? Um, well, generally, I, I'll, I'll hedge a trade. So if something, if I take, say, for example, I take a sell trade and it goes against me, then there's a buy signal. Um, I will take that buy for the same position size. Ah. That's, that's, what, that's one way I could do it. So I'm, I'm more than likely locking in a loss there and other than, so I can't really lose much more other than overnight interest type yep. fees or something yep. like that. Um, then normally what will happen then is I'll get a second sell signal where I'll take a second sell trade with a a larger position size. So then I'll just enter those numbers in my magic little spreadsheet and it tells me where my overall break even is. That's my sort of first target then. And it may get to the stage where it might, the price may drop right down through my price target, uh, through my um, break even level then I could say possibly I could close out the original sell, the hedge buy, and partial close of the second sell trade, then I'll place a stop, you know. So I've got I've got different things to managing trades and looking at where to start to um, take action and stuff like that. Nice. So it sounds like it's quite a, a complex, uh, well, not complex, but quite a sophisticated exit strategy in terms of not having that stop. So... Um, interesting stuff. Now, what what about the number of instruments that you're trading? Uh, basically, there's eight main currencies. I'm not looking at the exotics, so I mix them up. I think you get about 28 pairs, and I look at gold and silver. So that's just got them set up on a profile, mate. Just rip through them in about 15 minutes. And so you could, so you say you're, you're trading with the strategy, and you haven't got a stop loss. Would you only take the hedge on that trade? Oh, sorry, on that pair, or would you look to hedge on on another pair? No, no, just hedge on that same pair. Okay, like, cool, cool. So it, and even like if I'm trading other time frames, say for example, if I'm looking at the twelve hour charts or something like that, if I get if I'm looking say at the euro USD, and I've got a buy signal buy signal on my daily chart, I'll take the buy, and if I get a sell signal on the 12-hour chart, I'll take the sell. So it doesn't worry me. Okay, cool. And and uh, in terms of like, say if you had to have a, I mean, you talked about 200 pips earlier on. In terms of pippage, is that even a word? How many pips would you, you make in a week on average? Oh, I couldn't tell you. <laughs> no idea. I don't, I don't even No. Because um, the trade, like I've got... Um, you know, a lot of traders talk about risk-reward when it comes to uh, I'm going to risk 50 pips to make 100 pips. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't even enter my equation because I've got no idea how long a trend will last. Like at the moment too, the daily charts have been, been real dogs to trade unless you're trading the pound on the, on the right side. Um, and we're coming into August too, which is the quiet months. So 
trends aren't going to last that long. So I'm just looking for signal. I've got definite um, signals on my chart that tell me it's all the time. I generally scale out. So if, say, for example, if, like I said before with the MACD Platinum, if I'm taking buy trades, generally that means the MACD Platinum's below the zero level. So as soon as the MACD Platinum, if I take a buy trade, as soon as that MACD Platinum crosses the zero level or touches the zero level, I'm looking at that trade going, all right, I'm going to start scale out probably half and put a stop either at the point of entry or the same distance from where I took the half profit. So if it, if it did get stopped out, it'll be a scratch trade, break-even trade overall if I have to give it a bit more room sort of thing. So as soon as I get something like that or if I'm trading against the trend and price goes up back into my MAs, my moving averages, something like that to me says scale out, get rid of half, put a stop in place, protect your position. Uh, if I reach a previous high, the old support resistance type thing, you know, or a, a big round number or there's major news coming out. Like this week in particular, there's a lot of news this week. Other than Brexit, there's other stuff too with, you know, the um, US interest rate cut possible and stuff like that and NFP. So it's stuff like that, I'll look at trades and may take action. So it's not I'm just leaving trades run willy-nilly. There is, there is some... Um, yeah, thought behind it all. Okay, cool. Brilliant. Nicely answered. Uh, now, you've gone through your typical trading day. It's fairly quick quick and short, which is great. Um, what about cryptocurrency trading? Have you ever traded them, looked at them? Did you invest in Mate, Bitcoin? I look at Bitcoin. I look at, I look at <laughs> the first thing, first two charts I see when I wake up in the morning is how the, um, the US 500 is gone and how Bitcoin's gone. Right. I don't know why I look at the big. I don't know why I look at the Bitcoin chart. It's um, it's just look at the daily chart. It's got my setup on it. Just more out of curiosity, I think I've got a few mates here that were right into it and probably got sucked in during that 2017 drive up, and they've all done their dough. So I've just been interested in how it goes, but I don't trade it and I don't really understand it. So, cool. Seen. Okay, brilliant. Well, look, um, I suppose yeah. Let's go back to. The beginning, like you know, you're a police officer. You've, you know, you obviously have gone from that to now living the, the trader's life. You know, over there in a tropical, <laughs> tropical country on, a, on the living on the beach, um, as you mentioned before. Uh, what do you think made you different from everyone else out there who's who's going through this and struggling and, and it's not working? Um, I think you've just got to have uh, realistic expectations. Uh, everyone that I, see, you know, I see a lot of new traders come in. And they're not, they wouldn't be happy with 5% a week or 5% a month or, you know, which is excellent, you know, returns really. Um, so, and you, you have to find something that you, you works for you and just work at it and practice. And it, it look, it, it's not, it's not, um, it's not as easy as it looks, you know. It does take work. There's no magic pill. Uh, it takes, I've spent thousands and thousands of hours on the charts, and I still enjoy it. So you've got to have a, a passion for it. And and it's tough taking a, lo- a loss, especially if you have a bad run and you're taking loss after loss after loss. It's it's tough on the, the mind, you know. And one of my sayings is, you know, the old patience, courage and discipline. You know, like part of my, um, when I was in the Northern Territory Police, I was actually like in a um, TRG unit, like a SWAT type unit, and I was trained as a sniper. So... You know, I'd be sitting out during my training. I'd be sitting out in the bush in the heat, the Northern Territory heat, forty degrees, laying in the sun for f- trying to move fifty meters in about four hours, camouflaged up. You know, and you and you find a good spot, and you suddenly realise you're sitting on a bull ant's nest. Oh, gee. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So patience is <laughs> the patience part for that is easy for me. So, yeah, but um, it would be. But I mean, it's it's not it's not an easy gig, and I think people just expect too much too quick. You've got to put in the hard yards, and you, you've got to be committed to it. You know, even um, it's like at the moment when we're doing this interview, it's just after three p.m. I've already been out on the water. You now I've come home, had a shower, I'm sitting here in my boxes talking to you, mate. So, and I've, I've just before I started speaking to you. I was running through a historical chart looking for hidden diversions. So, you know, it's just 
I do it all day, every day. So you've got to be committed. Yeah, and I think that's that's a big, massive thing. Like, you know, I don't know how how much I've got to go on about it, but once you get that commitment, that's that's when the, the changes happen. Uh, and and so wh- why didn't you give up? Oh, I just because uh, I enjoy it so much, mate. And you know, and and generally, you will master something if you keep at it, whether it be playing guitar, learning a new language, or you know, learning programming or anything like that. If, you, if you're committed to the chords, you, you'll eventually get on top of it. You're always learning, though. You, you know, like any guitarist, you know, will still tell you they're still learning new tricks. Or, you know, so it's it's just because I enjoy it so much. I love the, I love looking at the charts. I like the challenge. You know, it's the, all about the process now. It's not so much about the money. You know, so it's yeah. it's, it's it's good. You know, and I, and and it, but it can be lonely, and that's why. I, Sort of after I wrote, you know, wrote my books and that, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll start a Facebook group and that. And I've got nothing else to sell other than the books. So there's, I'm not getting, I haven't got a course or anything like that, or you know, not offering signals or. So, but I enjoy the interaction. But yeah, I, it does get a bit hard sometimes seeing the same questions over and over. And yeah, but yeah, that's just it. Part of the yeah. deal. Yeah. Well, look, I, and I think it's, it is a, it is an important point to sort of sit on there. The fact that you know, it is a. It's when you, I think it's when you can cross that divide between the money versus the just enjoying the process of doing it. Once you cross that divide, you're onto something. And yeah, and it's difficult to get there though. Oh, it is. Of course, it is, mate. And and like one of the other reasons we came to Asia because we we spent a year in Thailand before you come to Vietnam. You know, we we were. Um, the wife was in a pretty stressful job, and that and. She, and and things were just sort of not getting out of hand, but our kids are growing up, and um, you know, just sick of the the rules and regulations in Australian life. You know, every every month was a huge bill for something, whether it be electricity, car. You know, two cars. We just want to minimise our life. We you know, basically become minimalist coming over here, and you know, we can live in comfortably in Vietnam, very comfortably, say for roughly four thousand Oz per month. You know, so it's not it's not we completely changed our lifestyle and it takes other pressures off you, you know, so the trading pressure is not as much because you don't need as much sort of thing, you know, so. Yeah, it's a bit like the, uh, the four hour work week sort of approach, you know, go and live somewhere where the cost of living is lower and yeah. all of a sudden the pressure to, to make as much is no longer as great. So you can, you know, you adjust your lifestyle based on what, oh. you know, the expenses that you've, even- you've got. Even stuff like um, I, I don't know if you you know heard of Mike Cavell. He's the turtle trader sort of guru. Oh yeah, he lives he he he, um, he lives in Saigon himself in Ho Chi Minh City. And uh, one thing he always says is um, you don't you don't hear the noise. You know, like if I was back in Australia, every time I walk past a TV or I listen to a radio, you're hearing about the news, all the doom and gloom. In Vietnam, I can't speak the local language, so. I don't hear what's happening in local politics. I don't hear about car crashes. I don't, you know, you know, I don't can't watch a cooking show because I just don't understand the language. So, <laughs> yeah. mate, there's no yeah. noise in my life, you know. <laughs> and that's I enjoy that part. Yeah, for oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, like I was, you know, slightly getting off track here, but I was watching the news tonight, which I didn't. I never used to watch the news. As soon as Donald Trump came and and became president of the United States. I watch it for the sitcom it is every single night. The entertainment. <laughs> yeah, the entertainment. And um but it's like literally it was, you know, I think tonight there was probably about I don't know, hundred ninety seven, something like that, people that were killed and sixteen decapitated. So um, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, listen yeah, to yeah. that stuff. You're yeah, right, it's just noise. It's noise. It doesn't need to be in your life. Now, let's carry no. on. Um right. so dudes who are working a day job uh, and want to get into trading, what do you recommend? What steps do you recommend they take? I, if you if they if you're fair income about it, if you're serious about it, you will get up one hour earlier or go to bed one hour later. And if it, just get a bit extra time. You know, I know people are busy. Life does get in the way. Um, don't worry about doing the day trading stuff. If you're working a full time job, just get on the daily charts. Doesn't matter if you don't check them when the new daily candle opens. Just be consistent. If you if you can check them at ten pm at night every night, that'll that'll work fine too. You know, sometimes you get a good entry, sometimes you get a 
worst entry. Do the daily charts. Spend some time, maybe on the weekends, set a few hours away, just get on the historical charts. Work out a system, um, something that you can back test that doesn't repaint or you know readjust. So something that's going to be there historically as it is live, and just practice recognizing those patterns or those setups or whatever. It's like I said before, it's commitment. Even if you want to spend say a hundred dollars and get a, a, a forward testing simulator, you know I wish they were out years ago, and you spend a, a couple of hours on a simulator. You can you know it's It'll fast track your any education and your confidence in any trading system you come up with. But basically, make the effort and look at daily charts. Don't don't be scared off by daily charts because people say, "Oh, can't make any money because the, the the stops are too big," or or well, they try to trade daily charts. They use a twenty pip stop or something stupid like that, you know. So yeah, daily charts. Spend extra time on them. And get used to what you're looking at. Yeah, and and do you and just on that because it's sort of coming up quite quite regularly in some of the recent interviews I've done. Is there is there something around? I suppose the fact that even though you've come up with like a, a mechanical strategy that you trade, you know, you're still talking about the fact that you need to study the charts and sort of work out when something's going to be good and when something's not going to be good, and essentially build the intu- intuition that sits behind it. Now, is that is that a key part of being successful in this? Not just coming up with something mechanical, but building that intuition. Yeah, I think it's a combination, Cam, because you know you you can have a pure mechanical system and and do well with it, um, but you know the human mind works in strange ways. So you know, I guess subconsciously, I look at charts now and. You know, like people talk about candlestick patterns and you know support and resistance. You know, I don't, I don't know any candlestick patterns by name. You know, other than whatever Hangman or Dojo or something like that, Doji. Doji. But um, whatever it is. <laughs> but yeah, like, but I know to look at a chart, and I guess it's more of a subconscious or a gut feel or intuition, as you say. Now, whether that's any advantage to me, I don't really know. Sometimes I think if I just, you know. Did this when it said that, just do it without second guessing or using that experience, you know. So, look, I, I, I think it helps. What I like to do is look at the charts and spend time on the charts just to give me confidence in my system that it does work, you know. And, and the thing is, too, you don't, when you go back on your historical charts, you're not just looking for the, the cherry picking the good setups. You, you're trying to look for, for either, you know, if, you, if you're a trending if you have a trending system, you look for flat periods in the market and try and see how it goes in. And if you use a, you know, a, um, a sideways type system, then you go to trending parts in the market and test your system out there and see see what happens. You know, so you really gotta get into the back testing. Like as you know, old VP, your mate there, he, he says, do your back testing, spend hours. You know, it's a common theme. And if you want to, and I'm probably repeating myself here, but if you want to get good at trading, then that's the, that's the hours you've got to put in. You've got to do this, the hard yards, mate. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that people just they don't want to do it. They don't want to do it. And look, I, I, and I say that because I'm, I'm, you know, I've been there. I've I've lived it, uh, and I'm, right. and I'm getting better. Um, but I still would I still say that I could do a lot more back testing than I than I'm currently doing. And I am doing some back testing, but I know I could do a lot more. Um, but that's it. What's the trade-off? I've got to trade something else off for it. Um, like maybe I shouldn't be interviewing you, and I should be back testing. There you go. <laughs> oh, mate, off. Don't worry. I feel guilty as soon as I put Netflix on. I go, oh, I could be looking at my charts, but yeah. and I go, no. Um, right. So, so talking about the charts. I mean, what what would you recommend the guys go off who are who are you know newbies or or intermediate traders and start educating themselves on? Look, just something simple like set up a, a, a basic clean chart with, say, a, just a candlestick chart, right, candle chart. Look at a daily chart. They've got nice moves. Pick one of the major pairs and just, like, throw the three moving averages I use. And I just, I'm not sure why I use these ones. It's just a 50 EMA, 100 EMA, and a 240 LMA, which is a linear weighted one, whatever it is. Um 
and just have a look how price moves around those averages, uh, moving averages. Just stuff like that. That's just the basic. Gives you an idea of trend. You know, and I use, I use a lot of divergence. Um, like one of my books is just dedicated to divergence. And basically, with divergence, it's a little bit tricky to wrap your head around. But I think if you go to Baby Pips, like you just Google Baby Pips divergence. They've got a great section on it. There's only four patterns to look at, so it's not hard, but it just can, it can be a little bit confusing. Um, with divergence, basically your regular divergence means a trend is changing. So you can add a, say, add a MACD or an oscillator like CCI or a stochastic, any oscillator of your choice. I use my MACD Platinum because that gives me just relentless and constant divergence signals. Um, and look at them, just stuff like that, basic stuff, you know. It's not. It's just a matter of just keeping it very simple, clean chart, a couple of few moving averages, an oscillator, look for divergence, something like that, you know. Just learn that sort of stuff. Cool, brilliant. Well, look, uh, Jim, we're going to jump into the quick fire round, so hopefully this is going to give the guys a bit of a summary of what we've gone over and a bit more. Uh, so how long did it take you to go from newbie to consistently profitable? Years. Mate, it's still, I'm still learning, mate, but um, nothing less than five years. Yeah. What's your mental approach to trading, and do you have any special techniques you can share with us? Uh, I keep in a routine, mate. I get up first thing, straighten the charts, check them. Then I do meditate, and I do affirmations, write affirmations out every day, and do exercise just once a day, getting older, getting older, getting bones start to hurt, but still keep on doing something. And just try and keep it simple. Don't overcomplicate it. What's your favourite entry setup? Definitely with the trend, um, using my indicators when I get a signal, and generally it's when price comes back to the 50 moving average, either touches it or goes into it or very close to it, and I get a signal to go with the tr- those moving averages when they're all stacked in the right direction. And uh, you actually answered this question already, but maybe you can quickly summarise it. But what strategies do you use to exit or manage active trades? Um, yeah, basically with my MACD Platinum, if that gives me a goes through the zero level and I've traded from the other side of that zero level, that's a, a warning signal. So I'll start looking at managing trades. Uh, price reaches, if I'm trading against the trend, price reaches back to the moving averages. That's an option to start looking uh, if I'm looking at possible divergence, a reverse sort of divergence, then I'll start looking at managing. Price hits a previous high or low or a big round number, then I'm looking at managing my trades. Not necessarily exiting, but managing, possibly partial exit, stop in place, and follow with a trail stop or something like that. What's your recommended trading book? Uh, books might, yes. Um, <laughs> you can do your book. own if you want. No, no, no. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Mate, the, um, I'm not a big – look, this is probably going to bug a few people. You know, books like Trading in the Zone and all those – I've tried reading them I've, twice, even three times. They do nothing for me at all. Um, but there's one book I really like when I was going starting, starting out, just learning a lot about technical analysis. And it was a, um, the author's name's Marcel – Link, L-I-N-K. I I think his book's actually High Probability Trading. There's a bit more to the title, but High Probability Trading by Marcel Link. It's a good all-round sort of book that gives you a good overall, um, without getting into too much depth, goes through technical analysis, some psychology, money management, different. Yeah, it's quite a good book, actually. Nice. And if you want a good read, it's a bit of a laugh too, which I always like, you know, other than the old reminiscence of Stock Operator, which is a bit more drier. Um, there's a book, I think it's called Pitbull by Martin Schwartz. It's actually a funny read. He was a futures, I think he's a futures trader back in the day. You know, it's a good, <laughs> it's got some funny bits in it. And it's, 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 it's more personal, you know what I mean? It's like that. All right. Okay, cool. So good recommendations. Superb. All right, so, Another recommendation, what what would be one thing you'd recommend any retail trader spend the next month mastering? Uh, why and how could they go about mastering it? Um, I would have to say get away from the 
small time frames and look at the bigger time frames. Trade small and spend time on the charts, which I've gone said many times already. You've got to find time and make time and, and really nail down one pattern or one sort of setup and just hammer that so you get to know it like you know, back of your hand sort of thing. What's your preferred broker and trading platform? I don't, most of my trading is done on MT4. I use a few Aussie brokers, um, Pepperstone, Go Markets. I think I've still got uh, FXDD and XM. Um, used OAND in the past. I've used, I've used um, ETX Capital until they threw me out. Um, basically MT4 though, and I have I am running MT5 um, just for chart analysis. It's easier for the the, the odd time frames like um, the six, eight, 12 hours sort of charts snap it out using a um, custom indicator on MT4. But the only problem I got with MT5, um, they do, most brokers don't offer the hedging platform, which means they net all your trades in one basket. So you may be long and short, say the same pair, and they'll just net it all in, in one trade, which is a little pain for my sort of trade. Oh, geez, that is a pain. Yeah. Like I can understand why MT5 is a better platform than that. You know, offers a lot more and it's probably a bit more up, um, a bit more modern, but it's just not quite what I'm looking for yet. What's the worst trade you've ever had? Mate, I'm going to mention your All Blacks here. Their major sponsor, their major sponsor, AIG. <laughs> True, oh. bro. Uh, options trade back a long time ago, around the GFC time. Uh, Nah, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> AIG, though, right. like, every time, every, not only do I get peeved with the, um, the All Blacks winning every game, but there's just, just I've got the, that name on their jersey. Uh, well, they're during the weekend, so um, it's, a, it's a rarity in its, in its own right. Um, <laughs> yeah, draw. Right, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice, what would it be? Uh, all right. Longer time frames, small position size. And I always say the stress test is when you go to bed at night, if you can sleep and you've got open trades, your position size is right. If you can't sleep, your position size is too big. Nice. Okay. Last question of the show, as you will uh, fully well know, um, we'd like you to give us the bones of a full trading strategy, entry setup, stop loss, take profit targets, market time frame, basically something our listeners can, like yourself, can get, uh, get into and try it at home this week. All right, pretty pretty simple ones. Uh, it's pretty close to what the, the my first book, which is like a introduction to forex trading, just basically explains what forex is all about. It's got like a, I have it just to give the reader something. I've given a, like a bonus trading system, and it's um, basically you can get on the the probably one hour charts and above. Um, just add a, add a twenty five simple moving average and a maybe say a 200 EMA or something like that. So you've got the two moving average, 25 SMA and a 200 EMA. And to keep it simple, um, you would only take sell trades if the 25 and price and price is below the 200 and you only take buy trades if the 25 uh, moving average and price was above it. Now, to give you your signals... You would use a MACD, just a normal MACD. Now, default settings on a MACD are 12, 26, 9, as we all know. But change these from 12, 26, 9 to 6, 12, and 1. So that'll end up giving you let's just like a, a single line. Um, and now all you do is make sure you've got that zero level marked on that chart. And that would be your... This is your main indicator, so you'd have that. You know, just trying to bring it up so I can see it myself. <laughs> um, so you'd have that um, squiggly line, and when it, you can add an, another MACD just below that if you wish. It's up to you. Just a standard MACD with the histogram and the two lines, the twelve twenty six nine. It just gives you more confirmation. But basically, what you're looking for is when that. I, say for example, for a, a sell trade, when that Mac, that fast MACD, that um, six twelve one MACD, when that crosses the zero level to the downside, and it has to be confirmed by a 
close of a candle, so it doesn't matter what time frame you're on. Ideally, it probably works best on two-hour charts, two-hour time frames if you've got access to that. So when that closes below the zero level and price is price has closed below the 25 SMA and the MAs are stacked in the right the right way, so that means 200 will be above it. So you're basically going with the main trend. You take your entry there and you could just trail it down um, with um, your trailing stop could be remain on the other side of the 25 SMA down. SMA on the way down. Now, there's no profit targets as such. Normally, I just trade this as a hedging sort of um, strategy on the bigger time frames, and I just go from basically buy to sell. So, but if you you can look at your MACD, the the standard MACD that would be below the fast MACD, and just keep an eye on that. So when that starts to turn or cross, or the histogram changes, gives you an idea. You could scale out. Uh, tighten up your trade, etc. So that's just the basics of it. I can't really give you targets or stop placements. It's generally, I play stops if I'm using them on the other side of a recent high or low, which basically everyone does. Or you can just look at keeping keeping it tight if you want and on the other side of the 25 SMA. So that's sort of the bones of it, mate. Cool. Brilliant. It's absolutely superb. Really good uh, detail around that, guys. You might need to rewind and have a look at the, have another listen to and take notes. Um, right, before we wrap up, what's the best way for the guys to get hold of you? Uh, um, you can just go to my website, jagfx, that's J-A-G-F-X.com. It really hasn't got much on there, but it's got a contact form if you want to contact me by email. Um, like I said, I've, I've just got the three books that I sell on Amazon. And I offer like support through a Facebook group where I do call trades every day, just about, um, and post. And when I cook, so there's what is it? Just about four and a half thousand my Facebook group members. So I post trades every day, and also when I manage any of those trades, I'll update that on the Facebook group, and I'll keep a shared spreadsheet and that's share other resources. So through that, or even Telegram, I think I've got a Telegram group, so it's all JagFX sort of stuff, but. You just contact me through the um, website, and um, that's fine, mate. Superb. Well, look, a big thank you to Jim for sharing with us today. Everything we've discussed here, along with all the links, are in the show notes. To find them, simply search for Jim in the search box on tradingnut.com. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, folks, uh, so there we have it. Great interview with Jim. Now, do please do go and check out that video. Link in the show description there or... Just search tradingnut.com on the internet and you'll find it. So Jim walks us through step by step how he actually approaches not just his uh, indicators, but also how he does his money management as well. So you're going to see a quite a unique approach, which I think is going to fundamentally change the way you see or think about what maybe you are doing around your money management. Okay, so... Very interesting stuff there on the uh, Trading Nuts site. It's also on the YouTube channel, so make sure you subscribe over there. Now, if you uh, if you don't or if you haven't already checked it out, why don't you go check out my Robot Traders Club? So if you've got if you want to want to test out ideas like what Jim's showing you today, but keep your manual trading to yourself and like you know not interrupt that, then learning to build trading robots and testing out concepts is a great way to do it saves you a bunch of time you can test them out really quickly you can get it out of your system but still not derail yourself that's what i'm finding is working really well all right guys until next week uh, which i've got a special special guest on the show next week i've got uh, a guy from something called inner circle trading inner circle trader so he's coming on the show uh really interesting and unusual interview you're gonna love this one all right i'll see you then